as I ponder about um, this, and I was reminded um, about John Calvin's uh, statement. He says that, right? John Calvin, he says that uh, the heart is the factory of idols. Right? But my definition from this uh, Luke 14 is that the heart is the battleground of devotion, where every day we are facing war. Right? What, what is the war? The war of our desires to worship other things and not wanting to worship God alone. Dear beloved ladies, I'm so glad to see you again in Lesson 20 today. Um, today we will conclude the topic of discipleship. We will, uh, in your book, uh, In The Way, we are concluding where we are discussing week eight, day five, and we are going into week nine about uh, serving others in the body of Christ. And before we begin, let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your sustaining grace to us. And we just want to acknowledge to you uh, about the sinfulness and the brokenness in our hearts, Father, that our hearts are prone to wander from you that our devotions always wandering away from just worshiping you wholeheartedly our tendency is to walk away and worship other things that is pleasing uh, the god the idols in our hearts that we continue to worship instead of worshiping you alone help us father help us the holy spirit <coughs> that we will continue to strive to worship you alone uh, with the help of your word, your spirit, and your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ladies, before we begin uh, the lesson today, I just want to invite you again for the new Bible study that will start in August uh, this year. Uh, it is a new study called Into Christ Likeness. It is the continuation of the way. If the way is the study about knowing the Savior, it's about uh, salvation, it's about basic doctrine, and into Christ likeness is the continuation um, how we are growing in our sanctification process to become more like Christ. Um, and I'm so excited to begin this new study in August. We will start in the uh, week of August 23rd. And there will be 24 lessons in this study. Um, the focus of this uh, study will be on spiritual formations for believers that we are growing to become more like Christ and we are growing to become fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. Um, your leaders, your small group leaders will have the schedule of the 24 lessons and the dates and, and everything. Um, you can uh, ask for the schedule and the topics from your leader. So I would like uh, to invite you early so you can save the date, so you can book your calendar and you will register early also. And if you want to register in this uh, brochure, just um, scan the barcode, the QR code, and it will lead you into the uh, registration form. So I'm looking forward that you will join me again. Okay, now let's go into uh, the cause of discipleship. In Luke 14, verse 25 to 27, Jesus said, uh, So large crowds were traveling with Jesus and turning to them, he said, Anyone comes to, if anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple and whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciples i think this passage is like the summary of the battleground of devotion in every human heart right jesus is asking for our wholehearted devotion to him alone in this uh, in this verses that jesus is not literally asking us to hate 
our father, mother, or family members is not literally that, but he is asking our heart devotion to him will be more than we love other things in this world. And that is the cost of discipleship. Are we willing to wholeheartedly um, follow him and give a wholehearted devotion to him? Um, as I ponder about um, this, and I was reminded um, about John Calvin's uh, statement. He says that, right, John Calvin, he says that uh, the heart is the factory of idols, right? But my definition from this uh, Luke 14 is that the heart is the battleground of devotion, where every day we are facing war. Right? What, what is the war? The war of our desires to worship other things and not wanting to worship God alone. Um, as I ponder yesterday, so I was thinking yesterday, thinking hard and praying, how should I present this? How should I um, teach about this uh, hard passage in, in the cause of discipleship? As I uh, look at my own life, when I was single, the battleground of my heart will be from men right i'm craving for uh, the love of men the love and attention and being pursued by men and when it happened that i feel good that i feel i'm fulfilled that i my self-worth is increased because of that and i guess that is the struggle for uh, all single women not all i guess right so for, for some and that was the case for me, that my heart wandered away from God. I cannot worship God alone uh, during my, my uh, single life. I, my life is just like a, a railway track. It's just it's two way. One way, I follow God. And one way, I just follow whatever my heart desires. So it's a battleground that I want to date uh, men. I always want to have men in my life. I don't care whether that man is a believer or not. And, and then I dated non-believers, although I, I, I struggle with uh, guilt, but yet the yearning, the, the, the battle, the desire to have someone in my life is greater, was, was greater than my desire to worship God alone. So our hearts, even everyday life, right, is a battleground, uh, whether we want to worship God alone or worship our desire. And then after I got married, that issue about men is settled, right? God gave me a very godly husband, and um, that that part is fully satisfied. But it doesn't mean that when 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 I get married, all my issues in life is solved. Not at all. It creates more problems. There are other problems in marriage. And then after I I um, have uh, my daughter, and in my early motherhood. Uh, stage is that I, I remember that I battle again with the sense of significance every day I battle what I already go to school and I earn my degree and this is what my life is look like I just stay home and changing diaper and feeding this is all in life there's discontentment in my heart there's a battle every day I want something else but the reality is like this but actually at that time God wants me to just focus on raising uh, my daughter. And so in every stage of our life, there is a bat different battle, different season in our, in, our, in our life, right? In our hearts. And today, there's another battle again. So human heart tendency is always wanting to wander away from the God that we love. So every day is a battle. And then as I ponder yesterday about my 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 timeline so i draw my timeline so when did i really uh, able to overcome all this battle in, in my heart <laughs> it's it's never over i am still battling but when is the time when i consistently claim victory over that and i can point in 2008 there's a turning point that is when i started to disciple younger women that's when my life started to be consistent 
my victory is consistent my obedience is to God is more consistent why because in discipleship um, we for me it's like suddenly I'm a spiritual mother for younger women so the women look up to me they, they see how I live my life I'm I'm their role model so for me to live my life I have to think twice before I do something oh if I do this well I become a role model so in 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 such a way that it helps me to obey God more right it, it strengthen and solidify my obedience to God uh, in discipleship you cannot fake it if, if I'm standing right here and you just watch me I can fake it to you you don't know my life right you don't know what's going on in my daily life but in the discipleship relationship where you meet together more than once a week you serve together you travel together you eat together you spend time you fellowship together they know how I live my life so in, in such a way I'm being pressured it's like I'm being put in a pressure cooker to um, live my life give the role modeling and how I obey God if I myself don't obey God how can I tell them to obey God I will be a hypocrite right and they know uh, my detail if I fight with my husband they know if I fail if I get angry and I hurt people with my words they know so when I shop when I shop when I spend my money not glorifying to God they will know so I better think twice and ten times before I do something silly and jeopardize God's name and I am not a good uh, role model for the women that I am discipling so I guess again that the three means of grace right for us to grow God's Word God's Spirit and God's people is very very important in this case um, for me is God's people the younger women the one that I'm leading is the one that helped me to grow so much that I can say that I consistently characterize not always not perfect that I can um, win the battle of devotion in my heart that I strive uh, to worship God wholeheartedly not perfect not always uh, right but I'm striving and more consistent in that area I'm still struggling I am still not perfect today doesn't mean that when I'm saying this I'm perfect no I am still struggling in this area until the day I die um, and yesterday I had a conversation every Monday uh, my husband and I had a date and I ask him to confirm is that true that my sanctification process kind of like jump and to become um, more apparent since I disciple in 2008 and he said yeah but before that you are already married you're already a mother so those times also are preparation for you before you start discipling so it's more like uh, events or small events and uh, process that's happening not a one-time event that someone suddenly changed it is uh, a process it is uh, little things that being faithful in in my motherhood it's the quality that built my qualification to later on um, disciple young moms right if I am not faithful in, in my uh, mothering then how can I be uh, have the authority to uh, mentor the younger women young moms so yeah I guess what I'm saying that we need to pray to God we need his sustaining grace how can we win the battle in our ground in our uh, heart that we worship him alone that we don't wonder that we don't want significance we want performance we want praise from others we want uh, fame we want wealth we want money we want so many things in life we want beauty we want men we want the attention of men uh, is that we need to pray for God's sustaining grace that we need to pray acknowledging to God left alone we are not capable to win this battle we need God's Spirit we need God's people and we need uh, God's Word on a daily basis and we can 
daily also pray that God, please help me send someone, send something that will be my helper to win the battle today. It could be a Bible first, right? It could be an event that happened in a day. It could be the Holy Spirit is talking to us, convicting our hearts, convicting our mind. It could be other people, God's people, or even non-believers to come and say something that is helping us on our daily walk. And also, we need to pray that for humility, right? When we hear somebody say something that we need to hear but we don't like it, do we have the, hum- the humility to accept it and to really use it as a mirror that is that true? Yes, if it is true that we need to humble enough to accept it and to change and to be rebuked and to be accountable to other people. And that is the basis for why we should serve in the body of Christ, right? If we are not um, settled in this area, the battle in our hearts, right? It is very difficult to focus on God's work. It is difficult to focus on serving God in the body of Christ the way He wants us to serve. And let's move to um, week nine, uh, day one. Why should I serve others? In this Galatians 5, verse 13, it says that Apostle Paul says, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. So we are set free by what Christ has done on the cross. But how are we doing that freedom? Apostle Paul uh, instructs us to use that freedom to serve one another in the body of Christ. We are a family of God, right? In the family, every member of the family has a a role to play, to serve, and to chip in. And sometimes also, right, um, this is the motivation of the heart why we serve. Um, We can serve to gain the status to become the daughters of God. We can do that. Uh, because we are insecure in our ad- identity as the daughter of God. But the correct thing is that we should serve in the family because we are the daughters of the living God. Um, so because we are already a daughters, well, our status is we are already children of God. Imagine if your child come to you and then said, Mom, uh, I want to wash dishes so that I can become your daughter. What will be your, your response? We, we, we will think, you're silly. You're already my daughter, whether you wash this or not, right? Uh, so the reason, the motivation why we serve others in the body of Christ, family members in the family of God, is because our status, from our status as the children of God, that we want to serve one another in the family. That is the reason. And then how can I serve? First uh, Peter 4, verse 10, uh, Apostle Peter says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful st- stewards of God's grace in its various forms. So we should use our gifting. Whatever talents that God is giving us, whether it is spiritual gifts, or it is a natural talent that God is giving us. We need to use that to serve others in the body of Christ and also others that not yet in the body of Christ. Um, in this pandemic uh, season where church are not meeting anymore, it is we need to be more creative on how we can serve others in the body of Christ. It will be easier when we still meet physically that will there are ushering uh, you can serve an, as ushers you can serve as um, uh, Sunday school teachers or uh, assistant um, well actually the rock is still running we still need teachers and we still need assistance for this coming year in uh, in August but it is more difficult today since we are not meet physically. So we need to be creative. We need to pray about it and how we still can use our gifting and talents to uh, serve in the body of Christ. Um, if you like the brochure uh, of the new study into Christ likeness, it was created by Ingrid. So I, this morning before uh, 
before I, I left home, I texted her, I WhatsApp her, I said, thank you, Ingrid. I thank God for you this morning because you are using your gifts and talents to bless the body of Christ. Although we're not meeting, but she's very talented in creating all those brochure and, and design. And then the cover of the book, uh, Into Christ Likeness, also designed by Ingrid. So that, that is the way um, that we can still use our talents to bless others. And I just want to encourage you from Hebrew ten, uh, Hebrew 6 verse 10. It says that God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown Him as you have helped His people and continue to help them. So God will not uh, forget what we do for other people. He will reward us in His timing, in His way. That whatever that we do, for God out of love will not go in vain. To summarize the message today, I just want to give you uh, two principles. Number one, following Christ is costly, but it is the most satisfying way of living. Number two, Jesus expects us to serve others with love following His example. And for application, what are you doing? in serving others what is your motivation in serving others are you serving others because of your love for god because of the overwhelming love that is in you that you cannot stay uh, silent or you cannot stay uh, put that you always want to do something because you love god because you are so grateful to god for what uh, he has done for you that you want to give back to the kingdom of God by serving other people. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, again for um, reminding us that the battle in our, in our hearts is uh, so severe that every day we need to come to you and asking you to help us to send help but it's it's your word it's your spirit it's your people to help us win on a daily basis the battle of the heart and how can we worship you alone and not worship what we want the idols the god other gods in our life and we ask father that you will be graceful that you will continue to sustain us with your grace in jesus name we pray amen thank you ladies i hope to see you again next week on lesson 21